Hey, hey, everybody. How you doing today? Today, we're going to focus on the price elasticity of demand. But in this video, we're only going to focus on using and understanding the diagram. For more information on elasticity, like the determinants of price elasticity of demand or the applications of PED, check out my other video that is posted. For this, for, for today, focus on is, of course, we have to talk about the equation. And price elasticity of demand is calculated, right? It's abbreviated by PED, as you know well, is the percentage change in the quantity demanded over the percentage change in the price. And of course, this is for the same product. So it's percentage change in the quantity of X over a percentage change in the price of X. And the reason to know that is we want to try to figure out if we are a business owner, right? If we are the owners of a firm and we have a particular product, we want to know where exactly we're operating on the demand curve when it comes to the price quantity combination that is most desirable. Because if you're a firm, the most desirable thing for you, of course, is to maximize revenues, to find the perfect price quantity combination that will allow you to maximize your revenue. And knowing where you are on the demand curve, more or less, will help you determine if you should, A, increase your price in order to increase revenue or decrease your price in order to increase revenue. So I created this graph here and uh, I just wanted, you know, first of all, um, make sure you understand what's going on here. The first thing to do is, first of all, we're looking at price and the price elasticity demand and the quantity and, you know, whatever units in per year it would be for whatever product. And there's a point right here in the middle which is where unit, the unit elastic point of the demand curve, which is where price elasticity demand equals one. So when you do the equation that was on the previous slide and the answer comes out to one, then you know you are exactly at the unit elastic portion of the demand curve. And what that means actually is you are maximizing your revenues. Okay, so this price quantity combination and therefore the area of this entire box, which would be a revenue box, is where this business person would be maximizing their revenue. Okay, with that in mind then, what you can do then is say, okay, well look, on different, and we've already discussed in another video how the elasticity is not, is not um, the slope of the curve and the, elast the elastic note and elasticity are not the same thing. Okay, so if a, if a, if a business owner does, uh, uh, some calculations, and they find out that the price elasticity of demand is 3.3, which is to say greater than 1, they're operating in what would be considered the elastic portion of the demand curve, which is all of these point price quantity combinations above P1, Q1 up here. So the reason this is helpful, and this is what I say to my students in class, like you want to be number one, right? You want to be number one. How do you be number one? Well, if the price elasticity of demand is 3.3 and you're interested in maximizing revenue, what do you have to do? Well, you want to be number one. You got to get down to number one. Get down to number one. So what do you do? You would have to lower your price. And as a result of lowering the price, of course, the quantity demanded would increase. And as a result, you would get to a point where you would have increased revenue. Because any combination of price quantity in this area of the curve will result in less profits, or rather not profits, less revenue than, it, than operating in this portion of the curve, okay, P1, Q1. So when it's elastic, you need to drop the price and you will maximize revenue, and that's how you represent it. Okay, well, what about, what about, what about beyond Q1 and, and lower than P1? What happens down here? Well, this portion of the demand curve is the inelastic portion of the demand curve, and this is where price elasticity of demand would be less than 1, in this case, in this example, 0 0.626. 0 so what does that mean? Well, if you put in the price, combina the, the price quantity combination here, what you would find out is that you would, first of all, have a PED value less than 1, but more importantly, what it would tell you is like, oh, it's less than one. So that means in order, to, it's, I'm, that means I'm operating in the inelastic portion of the, land, in the, of the demand curve, and therefore I need to increase inelastic, increase inelastic, increase is a really cheap way of remembering that. Increase my price of my product. It will result, of course, in a drop in revenue. I'm sorry, not a drop in revenue. It'll re, it'll result in a drop in the quantity sold in the marketplace 
But what's going to happen is that you are going to increase the revenue because we all want to be number one. And the P1-Q1 combination, the point of unit elasticity right here in the middle where PED equals one is where uh, the business is optimizing revenue. So if you do your math and you have a product and it turns out to be less than one, that means that you are selling your product at a price that is too low and you need to increase the price in order to increase the revenue. Inelastic increase. If you do the math in the equation and you find out that your price elasticity demand is greater than one, then you need to drop your price. And as a result, you will get down to a price elasticity of one. You'll be number one and you will have maximized your revenue. So t think about that. Go back and watch some of the other, the two other videos uh, on elasticity of price, elasticity of demand for more information on how to understand price elasticity of demand because the purpose of this video was simply to show you the diagram and hope that you could understand it a little bit more clearly and apply it to any questions you might get on the IB exam. Okay, talk to you in a bit.